Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Before I get into this video, let's just choose another hot chocolate, a random Christmas hot chocolate. Let me just pick one at random. And see what one it is. Toasted Marshmallow. It's got Max on the box. With Merry Grinchmas on his scarf, I presume. So, yeah, I'm not sure what Toasted Marshmallow is going to taste like. But, yeah. I'll make this and I'll come back right away. Hi guys, I'm back. I've just made it. I filled up all the way. Last time I only filled it up about halfway and it was a bit stronger but I thought I would experiment and see how it would taste if I filled up the whole mug. It doesn't really smell of anything right now so I just put it down and wait for it to cool and I will try it at the end of the video. So this is another episode from my What's Lurking in the Dark series where I'm going for all the stories in the horror tube anthology called Lurking in the Dark. Today's episode is going to be about the story called The Angela, or The Angela, sorry, by R. St. Clair or Regina St. Clair. She has a channel called Regina's Haunted Library and Regina is such a sweetheart. She really is. She's really heartwarming and welcoming for I mean to people in this um, community she's she's very funny even though I really think that she wouldn't classify herself as funny but she's got that unique sense of humor and she loves everything horror she's you know that's pretty much what she's focusing on although I think that she's mostly focusing around old school horror rather than new horror I would love for her to read new horror, but yeah. Anyway, I've read a novel by Regina before, which is called Code Red. I've got a whole video on it. I will try to have a link down below if I can re remember to do it. And I've also got a brand new book, Carney, which came a couple of days ago. So I'll be reading this as soon as I get a chance. So as always, I will have Regina's channel linked down below. So I would highly recommend that you check her out. She's a testament that you can have a big channel and still uh, you know, be active in the comment section and you know, be active in the community. I know that a lot of big booktubers, you send them a comment and it goes you're into the void and they never get back to you and you're thinking well why would they but Regina always gets back to you she's really really friendly and yeah I, I can't recommend her channel enough guys go and give her a watch give us give her a sub and um, give her a subscribe she can be a little bit out there and quirky but she's definitely worth a watch so regardless of my feelings about her channel and her as a person and my feelings towards Code Red, I am gonna give you guys and Regina my raw um, kind of opinion on this story. Please um, keep, them, keep that in mind guys, that this is only my thoughts and opinions regarding the, the um, Angela story. And this is gonna be a spoiler free video as well. So basically, this story is set on a ship. More specifically than that, a old school wooden ship. Think about Pirates of the Caribbean, that type of, uh, that, uh, type of ship. And they are on a voyage, and they're at sea, and our main character, he has a tobacco plantation, and he has all these barrels of tobacco on board. And pretty much a monster attacks the boat and kills everyone on board. There isn't too much really to delve into than that. The writing style is typical of Regina. It has a, a flavour of writing. Although the uh, kind of story is a little bit dry for me personally. It, I do not know whether the fact that I haven't read too much period literature or whether it's the situation 
or you know, I don't know. But I kind of had trouble and it dragged a bit for me. The monster is fine, and the deaths are fine. It just wasn't that I mean it's it's still a good story, but it wasn't amazing and it wasn't anything, yeah. You know, to write home about and say, Oh my god, that story was really good. It was just, yeah, fine. It really was just okay. I thought that this story would have been better as a novel, you know, like a 300-page book where you have these characters that go on this voyage for maybe, you know, a um, kind of like a group decision or a group goal or a one big reason that they, that they all want to go on this voyage. Or maybe they... All want to get onto this boat, but they have all their different agendas and secrets um, on the ship and part of the crew. And if Regina wrote this as a novel, she could have fleshed it out. So you could have felt that you were a part of the crew, that you were on board this ship. With the wind blowing through your hair, you could smell the salt. You could feel the, the um, waves splashing up against the boat and splashing up against yourself. And then you could really get used to these characters and form an um, attachment to them. So when it comes to them getting killed and their final demise, you could form some sort of attachment to that person and to that character and feel sad for them um, coming to this dreadful end. It kind of reminded me a bit about a movie that I watched. I think I probably still got it in my house somewhere. It was about a cruise ship that was terrorised by this kind of tentacle creature, you know, with, you know, the one with all these teeth, and it was hunting them and, um, you know, killing them off one by one. Kind of like Predator, and I suppose that cross between the thing, but on a ship. I think that, you know, I mean, that's what it kind of reminded me of, but... This would have been better as, as a novel, in my opinion, rather than a short story. So when it comes to what I'm going to rate this story, I'm so sorry, Regina, but I'm going to have to rate this a two stars out of five. It was still a good read. I'm still pleased that I've read it. And when I reread the book, I will obviously reread re the story and maybe I will like it a bit more. But right now... That's the rating I'm going to give it. As I said, I will have a link down below to Regina's channel. So don't forget to check out her channel. which is really, really awesome. So let's just have a little taste of the hot chocolate and see what I make of toasted marshmallow. Hopefully it's not too hot. Yeah, it's quite nice. You could... You know, Definitely taste the kind of melted marshmallow in it. It didn't have any marshmallows in it. I just want to clarify that, guys. But it gives you the impression, taste-wise, that it had marshmallows in it. Yeah. Very, very tasty. I like this one. So, guys, that has been my video today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And with all that out of the way... I'll see you on my next video.